tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Well, today, um, I actually invited more youth organizations. Uh, they actually started because of the pandemic. So we'll, we'll find out the people behind these organizations and we'll get to know what they do exactly to help out during this time. So let's get started. First organization that I'll be talking to is Tiny Helpers PH and with me is Jean Bachtat and Erica Garcia. Can we have them on screen? Jean, there we go. Erica, Erica. And we also have uh, Jean Bachtat um, with us today. Hi. Ladies, how are you? We're good. Having us. Right. That was no problem. Thank you also for um, coming on the show. So I graduated so last year from Ateneo de Manila University um, with a psych course, EP Psychology. Uh, after graduation, um, I took a job as a program specialist in Autism Partnership. It's a behavioral therapy center for children with autism. Uh, but early on this year, yeah, um, I started helping with my parents. We're in the garments line industry, yeah. Okay. How about you, Erica? Hi. So, uh, I graduated last year, October, from De La Salle University. I took up uh, management and financial institutions. Mm -hmm. And then right after graduation, I um, started teaching. Uh, Mandarin and then I ended up loving it so until now I'm still teaching and then I also opened uh, I also started my own um, clothing line so yeah wow okay that, that's really cool are you guys are, are you guys friends sorry I forgot to ask we're best you. friends <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay I love it that's really cute okay all right so okay tell us something about tiny helpers PH uh, maybe you can give us also a brief background on the organization. Uh, so, initially, we're four friends. Then, when we kind of discussed on what we want to do during this pandemic, uh, all we have in mind is we really do want to help. And this is accompanied by the belief that um, no act of kindness is too small. So, putting these two together, uh, we didn't really want to put a cap on the initiative that we're going to create. So we created Tiny Helpers as an avenue for people to take necessary actions according to what our country needs or will be needing in the future. So it's not only for uh, COVID-19. Uh, so we believe that all actions can ultimately and collect collectively make a big difference in our society. Because as much as we want to extend our help and as much as we want to give opportunities for people to help, uh, we want to empower them and also remind them that no act of kindness, no matter how small you think it is, it's not really small because it could re really ripple into something great. At yeah. first, we were only planning to um, focus on donating to two hospitals and a clinic. Because that's, that's why we started. Because one of our friends actually um, brought up the idea of starting this organization. And it was because she knew some friends um, who were also frontliners who needed um, extra PPEs in their hospitals. So, um, of course, the, we were all willing to help. So, we started planning and then we acted right away because we really saw like the need. So, we started preparing everything and then we started g gathering the donations. And then after just a day, we reached 100,000. So, it was very overwhelming. So, after that, we decided to add more beneficiaries. So, we extended help to um, 3,000 delivery riders. So, we partnered with Grab and Food Panda to give out face masks. And then, we also, um, there were also a lot of articles during that time about garbage collectors. They were like um, saying that they were also frontliners. So, I, uh, they deserve um to get help also so of course we had to um keep that in mind so what we did we also um gave donations to 380 garbage collectors and street sweepers from payatas and then of course um providing ppes to two hospitals and a clinic 
So okay. that's our first wave. And then, of course, we still kept on getting more and more donations. So that's why we decided to move on to our second wave. Yeah. So, yeah, so what, does it, uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Because um, to expound more on the second wave, but um, we really saw the generosity of the people. When uh, Erica said that like, God really provided, especially during time at, at like this, uh, we're just really amazed with how people came together. Because um, aside from the internal targets that we set, like the target amount, target number of beneficiaries, and even if we were planning really to accept in-kind donations, we didn't really take into account that at the beginning because it's hard to assume and plan um, to a lot like that at the beginning if we assume them will have certain amount of in-kind donations. So, but people kept giving and by the end of both phases, um, people started reaching out also, like people na may kakilala or uh, other beneficiaries themselves reached out to us. And by the end of both phases, we were able to reach around 500,000 pesos in less than a month and other in-kind donations. So we were able to reach around 3,000 delivery riders, around 400 garbage collectors and sweepers, 350 families, and 10 hospitals. So currently, we're consolidating what we have left. And so far, we think we can we can make around a hundred more relief packs that can provide for around a hundred um, medium-sized family. When did um, when did you start? We started April two. April, April two. two. Yeah. Okay. So there we can see in the. Do we have other photos to show? So yeah. We do. Okay. There. So this is what you. So this is what you've donated so yeah. far. Right. Yeah. So okay. far. So. We, some left that we're looking for a community that we can donate it to. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, for the viewers out there, if you know of any community that these girls could donate to, um, feel free to comment down below or send them a message because you still have supplies. Now, what what do you have? Pa? Uh, really, facts for a uh, community. Like okay. Food. Okay. Yeah. Rice. Okay. Okay, so again, yes. If you, if you have any suggestions to the viewers out there, um, comment down below, or you can send them a message. They're tiny helpers, th. All right. So these are some photos, no, that you've donated to. Okay. No amount of help. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing the photos. But yeah, you know, you girls, um, really good idea, and I totally agree that, um whatever help you can give that's already uh, no, that's already something big. for the next two organizations um i have i have munting pagsaludo and the one representing munting pagsaludo is miss jamie gonzalez and i also have marielle kunanan from super super can i so marielle and i are actually batchmates since high school and then we both graduated from up diliman with a ba psychology um, I started working for a digital marketing agency after graduation and then um, about after a year I um, changed my career path and I'm currently working for the local government academy for DILG. Maybe we could start with Marielle. Um, maybe you could talk more on Super Trooper and what uh, the organization does. Um, basically, Super Trooper, uh, it's an online platform that connects, uh, directly connects donors to PUV drivers who can um, they earn their daily living because uh, transportation is suspended during the quarantine. And although I know that some transportation is being resumed after the ECQ is lifted and since we're going to GCQ, it's still different because it's going to be in minimum amounts and it's not going to be the same as before because a lot of people are, you know, working from home. And we decided to make a super to pair maybe it's like on the second or third week of quarantine because um, I saw this tweet 
it it was a viral tweet and then um basically it was a girl posting a text message that she got from her past angkas driver asking for any amount through gcash um 20 pesos or 50 pesos would go a long way and then i started searching on twitter about um drivers and gcash and there were a lot of people a lot of troopers posting on there with their gcash numbers because it's a convenient way to get money during the lockdown and then it kind of clicked that i know a lot of people who want to help out during the pandemic but they don't want to go outside of course because we do want this to be over as soon as possible so we want to stay home we want to as much as possible uh do social distancing so um we decided to just make this platform where we can um connect them and make a way for the donors to donate online and then it has a the design has a twofold platform like why people ask us why we wouldn't just get the money on our own and then disperse it so everyone gets an equal an equal amount so first is we want to make sure that there's an interaction between the donors and the donees because most of the time donations are so it's a figure you reach you want to reach a hundred thousand or a million and then your money you don't see the effect of your money Whereas if you if you see the conditions that our troopers are living in, some of them live in their jeeps, some of them have to go to dialysis and they have to walk to the hospital. If you see their conditions, you see that your 20 pesos or your 50 pesos can buy them uh, a meal or a cup, isang kilo ng rice or canned goods. So you know that you're actually making an impact on them, no matter how little you can give. And um, I have a picture that I can show, and then um, basically it it summarizes how much we've given so far. And yeah, um, we've already helped 1,730 drivers, and the average donation for each driver is 2,000. But we do know of some people who have reached 25,000. Um, that uh, person in particular, he's a he's a trooper with six dogs, and then oh. imagine like. You, I, I always say that the people who have the least have to give the most love. So they have six dogs, and yun yung yun yung talagang pitch niya. Please give me money so I can feed my dogs. And then yeah, um, we ha- we recorded a total of ten thousand donations on the page before we archived it, and then um, we estimated that the amount of donations that we've received um. Or the trippers have received ever since we start um, is minimum of 2.5, but the actual number is probably around 3.5 million. So yeah, right now the page is archived because we want the 1,731 drivers that we already have there to have um, as much as they can get, and um, you know we don't want them going in there and not getting any anything. Whereas some people used to get a lot. So yeah, that's why we archive the page for now. So basically, when we started this, we didn't expect it to become like a, a trend. Um, but then within the first week, uh, we got around 20,000 members in the group. And then people were asking us if we can um, start posting construction workers or security guards or, you know, all of these people, these communities that are disadvantaged by the um, lockdown. But then we were concerned that um, we want to help this particular sector and there's not enough help for them. If we expand the reach, we might not get the help we need for trippers so people started asking us um if they can make their own group and if they can pattern it after our rules and our systems and jamie was one of them and then initially we were trying to find a community that they can help and then we finally settled on security guards which is what their community is so munting pag saludo started um a couple of weeks after the super trooper initiative was made and when we were thinking of a community to uh, reach out to there were actually quite a lot of groups already that are similar to super trooper so there are groups for street vendors there are groups for um people who work on an on a daily wage basis and so choosing security guards is actually um it's a bit personal 
for us, for us four who created it, because um, three of us graduated from UP and uh, one of us graduated from Ateneo. And we know stories of guards who are stuck in their posts there at school, at the campus. And here where I live, uh, security guards are, are also stuck here in our um, building because of the lockdown. And so that was basically the reason why we chose to reach out to security so guards. All right, so Thank you. we have we have one more youth organization to talk to, and he's here today. Um, the the one and only representative. His name is TJ Malvar. He is um, his organization is called Puso Kitchen. So may we have TJ on screen? Hello, TJ. Hey, Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you also for being part of this show. So, TJ, um, before we talk about Puso Kitchen, uh, maybe you could give us a brief background of yourself. Um, sige. I'm, I know, I'm a doctor by profession. I uh, graduated. I passed the boards last 2015. So, I've been a primary healthcare practitioner for almost five years already. And I serve as a village doctor here in our barangay in Antipolo, in Barangay Calawis. And I'm a uh, barangay kagawad also. So okay. those are my, those are those are the two hats that I wear: uh, being a doctor and being a, a public servant at the community level. And that essentially led to me thinking about taking off Puso Kitchen um, when the lockdown was announced. Okay. So um yeah you're you're a doctor by profession um congrats by the way on passing the board <laughs> yes and um so what is your how do i say this medical track is that the right term mm, well <clears throat> you should, traditionally you go into a residency after graduating oh. from the boards um but I think a lot of doctors uh, nowadays are leaning more towards alternative career paths um, kasi millennial doctors na rin eh. So, millennials like, di ba, carving out our own niche. So, I think for a lot of doctors, ganun din. So, I didn't end up specializing. Um, my passion really right now is um, primary healthcare, so community medicine, and at the same time, well, very recently, because of the COVID-19 crisis, um, I'm very involved with activities related to food security. Security, okay. Well, that, that's that's nice to know. No? So we have a doctor slash kagawad pala on, on this show for today. Puso Kitchen. Um, initially, it's really a soup kitchen. So puso is a kind of a play on words, diba? Ano ba tayo? Anagram ba yun? Or something. Basta puso, soup. Diba? Tapos kitchen. So our intention was really to serve um, hot meals to the vulnerable, vulnerable uh, members of our population in our community. So that's pregnant mothers, senior citizens, Chaka underweight children. So our initial target was about 300. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> sorry, we initially, um, my initial parang attempt at raising funds for it was through a Facebook post, uh, which I'm sure a lot of the groups who raised funds for um, you know, the various COVID-19 um, efforts uh, used also, social media. Um, so I posted on Facebook, I think that's March 18, the night that Duterte announced the ECQ. So I was very worried about the welfare of our community. So at the time, the COVID-19 um, crisis was very abstract. Until now, it's very abstract for us in terms of the health aspect because we have, we've had zero cases here. Um, but the social economic aspect is one that has uh, really been felt um, in our community because we have a lot of trabajo. Mm-hmm. And we have a lot of farmers who lost access to the market, so they're unable to to sell their goods essentially. So we started Puso Kitchen March 24, um, as early as the first uh, week of the lockdown, and then we we began serving hot meals, you know, hot and healthy meals, um, to averaging about 300 meals per day. But then very quickly after that. About two weeks after we transitioned already to Puso Goods or um, our attempt to distribute uncooked food items, so rice and vegetables, to 1,800 families. And we've been doing that ever since. Okay, so, what's this? 
So that was our, ano, that was our shipment of uh, veg veggies from Benguet. Oh. We were very uh, lucky to, parang make a connection with the DA um, office of uh, region, well, for the Cordillera, Cordillera region. So we ordered tons of carrots, tons of sayote, cauliflower. Um, so we've ordered for them from them, I think, at least four times already. And each time, it's a huge shipment, talaga. And then we—that's what we distribute. And it's mm-hmm. a, it's a nice, parang break from the canned goods and from the sardines, diba? It's it's healthier. And then the nice thing with this is, um, for example, the carrots. It's very healthy for babies uh, because of the pandemic. There, there's a lot of parang moms who are struggling to give their babies milk. So carrots is actually a very good alternative. Uh, mashed carrots. So, right. yun lang. Parang ganun yung naging, ano namin, naging parang um, direction namin na instead of canned goods, we'll focus on fresh vegetables. But of course, we still got donations of canned goods from groups like Century Tuna, San Miguel, uh, and we gave them away. And equally satisfied naman yung mga tao. Mga, um, they're always, always very happy whatever they get from 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 us from Puso Kitchen. Um, so yeah, yun yung mga pictures ng operations namin. And then we try we try to kind of minimize our use of um, plastic. So we try to put the goods in eco bags and then we ask them to give it back afterwards. Um, pero syempre because of the ano, it's really tricky. So really we can't afford we can't parang help use plastic sometimes pa din. Um, but because we're a nature reserve, we really try to promote sustainability. Medyo, ano kami dun, parang, um, parang we just accepted that, you know, uh, wala, wala tayo masyadong magagawa for now. But, um, as long as we are able to, you know, to do the good that we want to do, okay lang. Okay. So this is all in Rizal, am I correct? It's only in our barangay, Barangay Calawis in Antipolo. Um, okay. it, it's the poorest, the most remote barangay. Um, so we're at the foothills of the Sierra Madre mountain range, and we're home to 1,800 families. Um, and the portion of them are actually indigenous people, the mga dumagats. So that's yung talagang community namin. And I guess we're lucky because well defined yung community namin. Uh, other groups are also doing similar efforts in other cities, like as in City or Manila. It's very difficult. Like for example, in Payatas. Um, pag may dumating dyan relief um, goods tapos makita ng mga tao because of the hunger, because of the the food insecurity, nagkakaroon ng agawan and everything. Um, which we also experienced. Pero after a while, nung na-realize nila na lahat sila makakakuha, hindi na sila nag-uunahan. Parang nasanay na sila. They just, they stay in your house and then we deliver it to, the, at, at, to them at their doorstep. Um, so ganun yung naging ano namin parang operation sa amin kasi nga may social distancing component. Tell us um, something about Munting Pagsaludo. So, uh, Munting Pagsaludo is really similar to Super Trooper. So, we connect the donors to the security guards in need directly through GCash or we also allow them to post their bank accounts so, because other guards don't have um, the means to get GCash. When we were so, starting, I actually, me and um, my co-administrators, we actually joined a lot of security guard Facebook groups. Mm-hmm. Um, so they also have their <laughs> public groups there where they share memes to each other <laughs> from different yeah. uh, agencies. And so we posted our group there in the hopes that they would share it then with their um, fellow security guards. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we have the pictures now on screen. Um, yeah. Maybe we can go to the next photo. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this yeah, is so what that's uh, our uh, mechanic. Okay. Security guard. All right. Yeah. What so else? that's how we verify that the security guard is actually legit, and then okay. that we have a thank you thread for our donors, and then the next few ones are the example that. Ah, okay. Nakatuwa lang kasi. Yan yung uh, security guard uh, who actually brought in a lot of donors because uh, he's stationed in one of the main buildings in UP. So a lot of people know him and he actually brought a lot of donors in the group. 
Oh, that's great. The mated po. Thank you for me. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I love those mga school guards. No, I, I remember every time I go to um, Benio, that's where I graduated from. I still remember the guards there. No, and yeah, they're really still frontliners. Eh, no, a lot, um, a lot are considered talaga as frontliners. So, um, that's great. Thank you so much, Jamie, yeah. for sharing. Yeah, they um, are. Um, one thing pag saludo. <laughs> so, so before we end the show, um, maybe each one of you could share um, an experience that you've had while working with your organization. Maybe we can start with um, Tiny Helper PH. Um, one of you can go first. Oh, okay. So I think. Um, like what really warms my heart with like what we're doing is seeing um, how much our beneficiaries appreciate all the donations, all uh, the generosity of everyone. Because when they send us photos, um, some of them even print out like um, signs with like "Thank you, tiny helpers," and some even make TikTok videos, which is really cute. So, and then some of them also send us like um, thank you messages, simple but heartfelt. So, yeah, that, that really warms my heart. Thank you, Erica. That's really cute. I, I want to see those TikTok videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, then we have Jean. Yeah. Uh, so, so, aside from the beneficiaries, I guess what I really appreciated the, during like, this experience is seeing guess, how God was working on this pandemic to see how like his goodness and his love and his provision in a time like this is seen through the people he's using um it's just really um, amazing well of course same as what they said that it's always really heartwarming to see people helping out in, a, in the donors um thanking the donors being very polite and you know posting what they um, what they've received and everything like that. But uh, I guess the experience that really stuck with me is not as uh, positive or it's, uh, it act, it's a bit darker because uh, during our time um, managing Super Trooper, there was an instance where one of the drivers passed away because he was um, undergoing dialysis treatment and he couldn't um, afford it all the time. And of course, the struggle of just, you know, taking dialysis or doing dialysis um, in the middle of the pandemic surely took a toll on him. And by the end of the by the end of the run of Super Trooper, there were at least three um, drivers who did not make it through the pandemic. And I feel like it stuck with me because even though we donate as much as we can, we give as much as we can to the, our beneficiaries at the end of the day, if there's no structural reform, if there's no um, concrete action from the government and all the institutions that are supposed to have the responsibility, not just donations, but the responsibility of dispersing our taxes to all our countrymen, then we, we won't really get through this unscathed. People will really suffer and we're hoping for immediate action. Um, if we're going into GCQ, um, not only to help the ones that can't work but then like the chippers like the construction workers like that but we also hope that uh, there can be more support for medical frontliners and especially the people who are seeking medication in the middle of pandemic like if they go to the hospital hopefully they, they don't contract covid or you know just to make healthcare more accessible in the philippines and basically our whole lives um to be uh have a better quality um by the but through the government actually doing their duty to our to us as countrymen, you know, yeah. Thank you so much, Marielle, for well, for, for sharing me, that. Well, I guess two things. So one is how what I'm amazed is with amazed with during this pandemic is how uh, the whole country or the whole community came together um, to help out one another. You know? I think in this pandemic, no one was spared. Lahat tayo ramdam natin yung effects uh, financially, psychologically, mentally, physically, di ba? Pero it didn't stop us from going above and beyond ourselves to to do what we can for our neighbor, for our for, you know, for our service workers, for our frontliners. And I think that's, for me, that's super 
super awesome, super makes me proud to be a Filipino. And at the same time, siguro one realization, not really as parang not a specific uh, circumstance, but parang a realization is that, or not really a realization, but something I want to share with others is that um, sometimes when we do good, diba? Like, as we all did good, I mean, tiny helpers, super chuper, um, we all did good, right? For the, our community and for our beneficiaries. But sometimes, uh, I like to parang advocate for the I don't know, the thought or the concept that doing good is actually sometimes it can be selfish too. Um, meaning sometimes when we do good, actually tayo din eh, tayo din parang we feel good about it. We change for the better. We feel a bit high. There's an there's a rush to doing it. And parang siguro yun yung gusto kong um, maalis minsan. Na parang doing good is not purely sacrifice. It's not purely parang wala kang nakukuha in return, you're just giving and giving, tapos walang benefit to yourself. But actually, there are a lot of studies that uh, have shown that, you know, when you continue to do good, when you continue to be kind to others, when you continue to go out of your way for your neighbor, for your friend, actually, it impacts you in a great way and makes you actually a better person. You're in a better disposition to face different challenges in your life. And I think that's something that this group shares, na parang we all did well, we all sacrificed, we all, you know, spent a lot of um, our own resources, our efforts into uh, making our pro- our own project successful. And I think today, as we all uh, have this conversation, I think all of us also feel good about that, diba? Na parang hindi lang siya um, puro outward. Meron din tayo, in- like, our interior disposition also benefited. And I guess, to me, that's my message to everyone who who's thinking of doing something similar, na parang do it for the right reasons, but also do it for yourself, not only for other people. Parang, ano siya eh, meron din siyang rewards, not only to others, but also, like, for me, like, all of the stuff that happened and um, I was able to do, I know that in, in, it impacted our community positively, but at the same time, I know that I am better today, me, myself, and better today because of what happened. Thank you so much, TJ, for sharing that. Thank you so much, TJ, Erica, Jean, Marial, and Jamie for being on the show. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed and you take care, continue what you're doing. And I hope to meet you soon if that's possible. Um, so there, that ends our show for today. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.